lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Thank you for your question. First of all, we have to understand what it means by not to name them in the context. The same Hebrew prophets who were saying not to name them pointed out who they were very often. You see the Hebrew prophets under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit naming Baal or naming Molech, who Moses, of course, said were demons. He said these gods are demons. These other gods are devils. Shadim in Hebrew. Paul identifies them as demons in Corinthians. The Manoi. Other gods are demons. Ari Krishna is a demon. Allah is a demon. These are demon gods. Allah is an Abitaean moon god. That's the first thing we have to understand. They are demons. But when it says don't mention them, it doesn't mean don't identify them. It means not to mention them in any kind of a reverential manner or in any kind of a manner that would imply any kind of worship or acceptance to their validity. Hence, you have a serious situation now. You've got people like Rick Warren, a man who's inspired by Satan, obviously, saying we can have a global peace plan by uniting with people who worship demons, Hindus, Muslims, people of other faiths and religions. We should unite with them to bring in global peace. Where does scripture say we should unite with demon worshippers to bring in global peace? Rick Warren is on the devil's payroll, in effect. Uh, this is very dangerous. It's not that we don't say that there's an Ari Krishna or a Rama or a Sitra or a Shiva or an Allah or whatever. It's that we don't pay them any reverential mention, that we in no way show any kind of attribution to their validity uh, as a deity. One of the most sickening and disgusting things happening today is with Youth of the Mission. I really hate that organization. Some people from Youth of the Mission, some people were teaching that you can call Jesus by the name of Pele, the Polynesian Hawaiian volcano god. Now before the gospel reached the Pacific Islands, the Polynesians were throwing human babies into the volcanoes sacrificially to placate Pele to stop the lava flow. Now we're being told we can call Jesus Pele or call the God of the Bible Pele. This is absolutely demonic, but what do you expect from youth of the mission? They never cared about the word of God to begin with. They have no doctrinal basis for what they're doing. It's not even scriptural to send young believers to a foreign mission field in the sense that they do. These things that you see with youth of the mission and Rick Warren are plainly violating the prohibitions of scripture that you cite. Another problem is equating Allah with Yahweh. As a generic term, Allah is an Arabic word for God. You can use it in that sense. But as a proper name, Allah is the Nabataean moon god. He's not Yahweh. He's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a different God. Doesn't have the same attributes. He's an ancient deity against whom the children of Israel were opposed and were opposed by. Uh, when you read about the sojourning through through Edom and Moab and so forth, that was their God. We have to be careful. It doesn't mean you don't identify them, name them in the sense of identifying them, but it does mean that you don't pay any kind of homage or recognition to their legitimacy or anything that would that would express any kind of worship or even suggest the validity of, of their worship. When you see people saying Islam is a great religion, what they're saying is the worship of a demon idol is something great. You've got crooked politicians like Bush who've said this and Obama who've said this. These are wicked men saying wicked things. These things are wicked. They may be doing it partially in ignorance and partially out of purely political motives, but it's wicked. 
It is absolutely wicked. Something else that's happening in the church is called Chrislam. Chrislam, where you have people who claim to be born again who are trying to find common ground with Islam on the basis of trying to make passages of the Quran compatible with the scripture and treating their God as our God. This is wicked. Further wicked, this came from Biola University, people like Craig Hazen, uh, who, who are, and, 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 and Rodney Zacharias, who's compromised with, with, with Mormonism. Their Jesus is not our Jesus. The Jesus of the Book of Mormon is the spirit brother of Satan. Our Jesus is the monogenes, the only begotten of the Father. He's not the spirit brother of Satan. Yet you've got evangelicals compromising with their Jesus, not with our Jesus, just because they have the same name doesn't mean they're the same Jesus. Two people named Philip Johnson in the telephone directory in Denver doesn't mean they're the same Philip Johnson. Neither does it mean they're the same Jesus or the same God. Jehovah's Witnesses, their God is, is Yahweh, they say, but they deny that Jesus is God. They say Jesus is an angel. The Jehovah's Witnesses have a different Jesus. The Eucharistic Christ of Rome is a different Jesus. Our Jesus is not bread and wine. He doesn't return physically in the Mass. He returns the way he left. So, too, Mormonism has a different Jesus. Islam has a different Jesus and a different God. We do not in any way pay homage or imply acceptance of the legitimacy of a worship of any God but the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is eternally triune, the persons of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He and he alone is the one true God. That is what it means. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you. Thank you.